Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have Lilia Rose. She is an author and she is an investor. And she came to this country with only $600 in her pocket, and she is a self-made millionaire. And it's because of the way she invested and how she put, where she put her capital, how she did it. And she has a great story to tell. She has lots of advice to give to people, and she really has a uh a compassionate edge for women and helping women become millionaires and showing them how invest in the right way can change their lives. And her book is going to come out in mid September. So she'll be launching her book and she's going to tell you a little about that. And that will have a lot of her little secrets in there. So make sure that you check her out on Amazon where her book will be. And Leah, it is an honor to have you on the show today. I am so glad that you came and can you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Oh, thank you, Stacy, so much for this wonderful introduction. Uh, I really appreciate it. So um, I am an immigrant, as you probably can tell, right away from my strong uh, Russian accent. I came to America in 2008 with $600, no friends, uh, and actually very little knowledge of English. And... That's the beginning of my story in this country. But 10 years later, I became a self-made millionaire thanks to the stock market. This is a very uncommon path among women, honestly. Uh, we have a lot of successful entrepreneurs and people made money in real estate. But for some reason, it's like not as common among women. And that's why I wanted to share my story. Uh, the story of an immigrant with very little English that started out with Google Translate and no capital and somehow made sense of it. Uh, actually, I ended up, not only I made sense of it, I ended up working in the investing field. I've done it for 15 years. Uh, more than 10 years of it I spent as a professional hedge fund analyst, which basically means I was advising portfolio managers about purchasing or selling particular stock ideas. So that's sort of what I've been doing. I even had, a, while working in that field in Wall Street, I even had the honor of meeting investment legend and having a private dinner with him and at his home, Warren Buffett. <laughs> So I, I have some kind of knowledge about investing and given I came from this uh, very, uh, basically started from zero, <laughs> I feel like I have something to share with ladies and reassure them if I was able to make it, then they will do it as well. I love that. You know, I, you know, we were mentioning, we were talking about the statistics because we were talking about, um, I think it's, you, we were saying there's less than 10% of women worldwide in the business field that are in, that are millionaires. And, um, you know, a lot of women have a lot of fear, you know, about becoming, uh, taking chances and, and being able to invest in something where they don't know the, is the outcome. And do you find, you know, what what have you found maybe the reason why women are afraid to maybe take a chance or there's such a low percentage of women that are millionaires in our in our world globally? Yeah, thank you so much for bringing this up, because this statistic is just so um, disturbing to me because we all uh, have equal access to information, equal opportunities and education all we as the girls went to the same school with the boys. We all did as well in school, but for some reason we cannot succeed. We don't get equal pay. Uh, we don't, we, we, we underrepresented in the uh, ranks of millionaires. Um, and it, you know, it's so obvious, just look at the Forbes list. Majority of that list are men and Directly or indirectly, a majority of that wealth was actually made in the stock market. And I think that's an interesting disconnect that men, for some reason, they're not afraid to take risks. Uh, majority of the men, even though we were educated the same way, 
they for some reason not afraid to have brokerage accounts and and being quite active there they're not afraid to take risks and my internal reason i was really thinking about these issues when i dealing with my own identity as a woman who working in the male dominated industry of finance um that the biggest reason for women is the fear of being the first woman in our family <laughs> in our group small circle of girlfriends or even in our like generational uh it's just this is also an incredible statistic that uh only in 1988 women in america for the first time was able to open their by themselves opened first credit card for the first time without co-signing of their husband uh, a father or a brother right we're talking about just a generation ago so we're talking about living a life without uh, good female role models and <laughs> that's an explanation like imagine you even you're growing up in this even a millennial like me we were growing up we didn't have the role models and for me as an immigrant the statistic is even worse mm. uh, growing up in the soviet union we never had access or even the slight idea of the free market right not even opportunities for women <laughs> it just there was like just no access there was no equality and no access to reliable data so this this is just so what to do with this statistics it just accepted it is what it is and we have to be kind and gentle to ourselves it's completely normal for us to feel a little bit unsure and overwhelmed it's completely normal for women to to feel this way but at, at the same time we should realize that it has to be something there why a man keep talking about stocks during cocktail hour <laughs> why yeah. are they doing this there must be something there there must be something why men in the forbes list all investing in the stock market so it's just there is a lot of opportunities there to be made and it's enough for all of us that's why i'm here on this podcast i'd like to share how to, more women will break into the stock market and reap all of these benefits. And so that's the one fear, obviously the biggest one, just coming from our history. And then there is other fears of fear of, of math. <laughs> yeah. It's also very stereotypical, but I want to reassure you, uh, it's just life changing so fast right now. Like, even though I'm, in my mid thirties, when I was starting out 15 years ago, the way the brokerage, I mean, investing looked 15 years ago versus is how it looks now, it changed so much. So, yeah. yeah, so right now you have this easy smartphone devices that you can access on the go. Uh, mm -hmm. It has already pre-calculated all the ratios you need. <laughs> you mm -hmm. don't need math. What you need to know, you need to know what to focus on. What are the most important drivers for that particular stock to buy, particular right. stock you're looking for? So th those, like if you know how the market works and what to focus on, there is no fear of math. It's very user-friendly and, you know, like interface-friendly right now. You don't need math. So uh, we are so fortunate to be living in this generation, not only we have opportunities and the rights, but also the tools that are all here. So that's so that's I think how you should be dealing with fear of math. You don't need math; <laughs> right. it's all already calculated for you. You just need to know where to look for things. Then there is another big fear, and I think it's for uh, women especially is fear of losing money. Mm -hmm. It's just something in our DNA. We are much more risk averse than men. We don't like to lose money. <laughs> yeah. And we think about there is like this pounded in our head, this stereotype that the stock market is a casino. Mm -hmm. It's a game of chance. 
It's a, it's a place that you just put money and it's a black box and then you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> right. You, yes, you kind of, you don't know and that's why you're afraid. Uh, fear is a mind killer. <laughs> Let's use this Dune quote of this recent movie. It's it, indeed, if you don't understand uh, stock market, then obviously you're afraid and obviously you don't want to be part of it. But right. in my book, which is called Stocks for Women, mm -hmm. uh, I, I talk about how the stock market works and that it's truly not a game of chance. It's, uh, it's essentially, it's a marketplace just like an Amazon or eBay, but it's not for products. It's essentially for businesses. You can buy their Apple or Google and all of these businesses, they produce real uh, profits, earnings. They innovate and they grow and they have certain attributes to focus on where you can make educated choices. Uh, just like, you know, my favorite examples. So I have an investment block and I uh, already did a couple master classes on investing for beginners. I talk about this simple analogy for women on how you should be thinking about picking stocks. Imagine right. you go to the shopping mall, you have an idea. I want to buy a red dress. You just don't go there and just buy any red dress. You go there with idea. What is my budget? What length the dress should be? What uh, feet it should be? What specific color of red I want? I want to try it out. I want to feel it. I want to touch it. The same way. So like it's easy. It's like a shopping. So you, if you know what you need, what you you the same way you can go to the market and you mm -hmm. say, I want a tech stock. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want at that price. I want with this profitability. I want it to grow that much. So, and it's the best part is, especially for me as coming as an immigrant to this country, I really appreciate the fact when you invest in the American stock market, it's a highly regulated uh, marketplace. It's, uh, all the accountings are audited and mm -hmm. uh, so you can rely on this is not a scam in any way it's a real business it is super hard to become a publicly traded company so right. you're buying an ownership you become essentially co-owner of the business when you're buying a stock which is fabulous because you don't need to do anything you just buy that share and then right along with the Google <laughs> into the sunset. <laughs> okay, this this is it. So this is a type of mindset. We have to break away from the stereotype that uh, there is a fear of losing money because stock market is a casino. It's not, it's just right. not. So then there is another big fear, I think also for women, but also for anybody, it's just fear of not having enough capital. Like mm -hmm. even now, you're watching all these Hollywood movies to be, you know, this rich person. You have to have capitals to invest and sell. Again, things change. Right yes. now, it's a, it's uh, we have access to fractional shares. It's it's innovation of just last ten years. Like essentially, say fifteen years ago, when I had to when I wanted to buy, say, Microsoft or some particular stock that would cost $500 or more, I would have to save up <laughs> so much just to buy one share. Now I can start with $10 and buy the same expensive share just on a proportional basis. Right. So, so you will get your particular return in the percentage terms uh, much, much better, which I will talk about uh, later, stock market offers you much better returns, right? Uh, than high yield savings account and even or even real estate. Mm -hmm. So then the last fear I'm going to touch on, and I think this is very close to my heart. Uh, Stacy, we were discussing this, and I think for any woman, I feel like fear of not having enough time. Yeah, especially as a woman, we feel so overstretched. 
it's like on us is the family uh on us children <laughs> husbands in some way and also we all trying to build a career and to be successful and also to be healthy and to be beautiful all right. at the same time even like i mean trivial beauty aspect this takes time like a couple hours a week going to do your manicure and hair and then all at the same time we have to think about our mental health and to have all these balls rolling at the same time it's very hard and yes. it's, so that i think the way to tackle this fear is just to understand again we're so so uh fortunate to be born right now literally up to 2010 we didn't have these tools like fractional shares smartphones you remember stacy in 2008 was the first iphone smartphone came yes. up mm -hmm. so that means that you can access your brokerage account even while you're waiting for an appointment right so 15 years ago when i was opening my brokerage account i had to go home to be in front of pc and I'm not that old, you know, I'm just talking about yeah, how, yeah. No, things, I remember. how things changing so fast. It's incredible. And it's just so comfortable. You can go out on the go and the app is so easy. You just need to download the app, fund the account and know what to buy. Right. So fear of not having enough time. Uh, I think it shouldn't be there. And also I want to tell you another modern innovation that was not available and i think many investors potential investors don't know about it is ability to automate mm -hmm. uh, it's called automatic investing say if you know particular stock you like uh, or particular investment index you like you want to buy it every month which is a uh, uh, one of the best investment strategies for uh conservative investor is called dollar cost averaging you can automate purchases monthly purchases on certain amount of dollars every month and that's like again when i was starting out i had to go in every month check on my account stress out now i don't need to i can just simply automate it and i can if you think it's be worthwhile stacy i can also talk about it how to do it but all of this, there is like a detailed step-by-step -step, uh, walkthrough I do in my book, the whole chapter, how you as, a, uh, as an investor can automate a brokerage account and get your time back for yourself and your loved ones. I think that's a great idea. I think people uh, listening to you right now would love to learn how step by step, how they could begin the process, because a lot of people listening to you, they're awed by your story and they're like, how do I do it? You know, so if you could share some tips and some advice and go through a little bit, you know, that would be amazing because I think a lot of people could benefit from that. Sure, sure. Um, let me see what, where should I talk about? I think that let me start first. I want to take a couple minutes and discuss how is the stock market works. Mm -hmm. Why is it so volatile? <laughs> right. Why you shouldn't be afraid of this? Because once you pass that fear of volatility and accept this as a part of the reality, then everything else becomes clear, at least yeah. in my mind. Why you should automate it and forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the way I think about the so, you know, everybody knows stock market every around every five years has a correction which means that uh stock value cumulative stock value of u.s stock market could go down 20 percent and this is uh com completely normal uh, why because market just like nature it doesn't go on this steady process of giving you half a percent of one of percent every month no it's really moves in a cluster think about nature so say you see a tree that about to have fruits before it blossoms you don't see anything happening under the radar so 
But then almost overnight in the two days, you have a boom and the flower comes out. Yes. So, so the stock market really, if you do a long-term correlation between stock prices, they correlate to the cumulative stock profits, which makes sense. It's common sense. Yeah. <laughs> the value of any business is going up with the value of its profits. Very common sense. So, but what happens when you invest in the stock market, there is a time delay between when the earnings or profits are being announced and time of uncertainty. Are they going to make it? Are the profits going to go up? And that creates a whole space for people to speculate. Mm -hmm. So this time lag creates the whole field in economics that called behavioral finance. So that fear or greed around what the stock price is going to do. What you need to focus on if you invest a long term that you have to internally understand when you invest in the stock market, specifically index, you in indices, which is a cumulative performance, say, of 500 best companies in America, uh, they all as a group, maybe some of them, they will have a losses, but as a group, they all innovate. Why? Because the population of the world is growing. Mm -hmm. People consume more and more. <laughs> they become more fat. They become more greedy. They spend more money. And that's why corporate profits are growing as a group in the long term yeah so if you internalize that that the u.s economy going to grow and you optimist you're having children you live this life you're probably an <laughs> optimist by nature so you should just buy the stock market despite all of this volatility majority of which is explained by speculations because we for a long for almost three months Every quarter, we only have four data points a year. And in between, you don't know what's going to happen. And right. then uh, st stock market is um, uh, has a lot of traders that speculate and they create volatility. But also, obviously, the, the other aspect, why is the stock market volatile, is has to do with the outlook on U.S. economy. This is a whole field, really. I actually was taking uh, my, how do you call it, senior seminar in economics was about monetary policy. It all has to do about how is the economic conditions are in the, uh, in the country and what is the government response to them? What are they going to do with interest rates? What is inflation rates are? and on and on but after closely following it for 15 years and thinking that i actually know something about it i realized none of these experts can predict the future right none of these experts know that pandemic going to happen and we're going to have a global lockdowns and we will have inflation because you know businesses cannot uh, produce on time so there is obviously inflation because the shortages because of the lockdowns so it's yeah. very hard to predict life and to deal with that volatility because it's impossible to predict. and if you look cnbc or read wall street journal half of the newspaper or magazine is most of the time about talking about economy economic conditions because they think that if you know how is the economy going to be you can figure out how to time the market. When is the best time to, how to avoid all of this volatility? But I want to tell you, none of these experts know, majority of them wrong. And the best way to deal with this is to invest long-term. Right. So you have to accept it's volatile. You have to understand cumulatively um, US economy, grows and innovates and it's the best place to be mm -hmm. and three invest long term to deal with all of this complicated macroeconomic things so if you understand this uh this background to the market then you you will feel comfortable with um 
you will see the common sense of the best evidence-based strategy, which is dollar cost average, called right. cost averaging, which is basically an idea that instead of say you have you figure it like I have ten thousand dollars, I haven't been investing, I'm 40 years old, I'm 20 years I'll be retiring, I need immediately to invest money. I, I should go and open the brokerage account and put all this money right away. No, this is not the way to do it because you really don't know what you're buying into. What right. that, that's, that, that's why you want to come in gradually to the market and average your way into the market. Right. So that means basically you would take your capital, divide by 12, and every month invest certain amount of money into the stock market into diversified index etf you do this because you don't want to take uh, individual stock risk because when you invest only in one company you don't know regulation could change there's um competition could be uh, com competitive landscape could change there's so many moving parts and you know that my main focus of my career was picking individual stocks <laughs> and i want to tell you so many times i invested in the companies that you know i lost money but i made money more than 60 percent of the time and that's why i'm successful but it's just part of the deal you diversify even if you invest in individual stocks and that actually brings me to common mistakes that uh, individual re beginner investors make uh they go to some cocktail party <laughs> or <laughs> their husband or somebody they respect or they listen and cnbc some smart looking person or read some smart sounding article and they yeah. decided to go in and buy nvidia <laughs> so let's say like let's bring it down to reality the stock been going up it's still going to go up. AI will take over the world. There is always some great story behind every stock. The problem is uh, you might be late for this train. The stock already went up. And then it's more dangerous to buy, buy it now. And if you don't know exactly how to pick stocks and how to evaluate that business, which you can learn in my book, <laughs> it's a much bigger topic than I can explain in the 10 minutes. But you don't want to take this risk. It's just, why would you risk your hard-earned money and put it on one stock, one the conventional wisdom tells you not to put all eggs in one basket? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Just, just get diversified index. That's the best proven uh, investment strategy. And also... Interesting statistic about market that you should always keep in mind that uh, majority professionals, they don't explain is the fact that uh, if you look at, say, they, they say on average, the stock market been returning 10% a year. Yeah. The whole history. So that means that if you invest in the indices with the dollar cost averaging strategy long term, you should aim to gain 10% on average. Uh, but what what's people don't understand, if you're going to play a game of individual stocks, uh, majority of annual returns every year driven by several winners. Say last year, it was, they, they called seven stock, Magnis Magnificent Seven, this is mm -hmm. a Facebook, Amazon, Nvidia, Tesla. It's like well-known winners of last year, but every year they are different. So yeah. with your long-term strategy, you might miss out the next year winners, and then you will under likely to underperform um, professional, I mean, index, first of all. Right. You will underperform and you're not going to get your 10%. Then it really becomes a casino, especially when you're buying a stock on a hot tip without truly understanding what you're buying and why you're buying it. Right. That's so true. That's so true. 
I think that's great advice too. You know, I think, um, you know, if, if people have a better understanding and, and they follow the steps you provided, they could really, they could really, you know, grow in the stock market. And, you know, uh, of course, we all heard this incredible successful stories of people who bought at the right time Apple and became a millionaires because they put $10,000. I, yeah, yeah. I actually know some people who did that. Uh, so that's an appeal. That's why men investing, why they put in these aggressive bets, hoping for a Hail Mary. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I totally understand the search. What you can do then, you can take 70% of your capital, implement your core strategy that I described, Doll, your dollar cost average your way into the index do it consistently mm -hmm. automated if you want to learn it uh please check out my book that you can find in stocksforwomen.com which is a website is the same name as the name of my book stocks for women uh but you can take 30 percent of your capital and just have a play money when yeah. I was starting out uh, as a student, I didn't have capital. <laughs> I was in a credit card debt. Mm -hmm. How I was starting out, any brokerage account has an access to paper portfolio, which is essentially means you can play with virtual money. You know, uh, you can, if you have an urge, somebody tells you like this particular stock is hot, you should buy it. You just buy it virtually and see what's happened. And over time, you kind of get a feel about your success rate. You learn something along the way. You learn, most importantly, about your risk tolerance. Because yeah. for a different person, it's a different risk profile. Some people feel comfortable with having 10% of their hard-earned money in the risky bets and sleep well at night. Some other people can have 50-50, you know. Yeah. Yes, but you, you kind of, you cannot learn it. So this is another aspect I've learned in my career. Um, you can read all of these books about investing, but some of the uh, learning comes from observing the market and learning your physiological reaction to that, identifying your sort of feel for this. And right. that's also in my book, I uh, have the last chapter about how to incorporate investing into your daily life, how to make it part of your life. Like, you know, you're going to yoga once a week, the same <laughs> way you feel comfortable enough allocating once a week, 30 minutes and doing something for your future. And I have this daily investment routine <laughs> where I talk about it, you know, how to set up a market monitor when what is it, why we have it, and where you can, basically what is it is, is the place where you can compare daily market results of different indices versus mm -hmm. the stock you would have bought or you already own. And just kind of see how your particular investments in certain stocks behave in relation to the index. Because there's right. so many indices, so many ETFs that expresses different uh, investing goals. Some of them only invest in tech uh, technology. Some of them only invest in dividend paying stocks, which is another right. interesting area. Some of them only invest in real estate. So you don't have to buy real estate, yeah? Right. Uh, some of them buy and diversify 500 most prominent companies in America, which is called Standards and Poor's 500. So you can allocate your uh, stocks and indices of interest and just watch them once a day, what's happened. And believe me, once you see that this side hobby mm -hmm. uh, start making money to you, that investment routine becomes much more interesting it will become right. like second nature like you che you're checking your instagram the same way you kind of glancing on the brokerage account believe me it's very addictive yeah. and the best part of it that if you will invest a little bit of of your money uh excuse me invest a little bit of your time and learn about it then set it up automate get an application 
then it's not going to take a lot of time from you. And then it will become sort of part of your lifestyle, like all men do. And mm -hmm. the best part of it that this hobby will actually make you money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unlike any other hobby where you have to pay for, like, I don't know, going yeah. for yoga for $30 per class. Right. Here you're going to get paid. It's just a wonderful hobby to have for women. And I think um, this is, you know, social media is filled with these promises of passive income, side hustles. Why? The yeah. best thing already been discovered. It is the most um, evidence-based. It has over 100 year history. Uh, you investing in the best of the best companies in the world. Why to invent the wheel? Go in and just become co-owner of existing businesses. I love yeah. it. I love it. Now, you said that your book will probably be out um, mid-September. That's when your book should be out? Specifically, it will be out September 17th. Okay. Uh, so we, I already have a launch date. And uh, I want to, to have a little surprise for your <laughs> podcast audience. If you choose to uh, buy it on the day of the launch, it will be available at a very special price. Uh, only for 24 hours so please <laughs> if you compel uh, with my passion uh, and want to learn about it um, you can find all the information you need on my website which is stocksforwomen.com I love it now if you had to take everything you learned we talked about today in our conversation what would be some important factors you'd like to emphasize to the listeners um, I want to tell ladies that they shouldn't be hard on themselves for procrastinating <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's completely normal given our history uh, of just this is just so new for us to take control of our finances. Just accept right. that. Be kind to yourself. Uh, take time and have an internal belief that you can learn a new topic like investing it's nothing hard it's like you know uh, going for the first time to yoga class yes you will learn some new vocabulary at the beginning some new poses yes investing will in entails learning some vocabulary but behind investing just like in our conversation is all common sense <laughs> it's based on the tangible reality you should feel compelled with the idea that when you invest in the stock market, you investing in real businesses, it's not a casino. Right. Uh, and most importantly, this something you do for yourself today will guarantee uh, financial security down, down the road. Uh, just, just to have a peace of mind, it's just so important for us as a woman. We really don't know what's going to happen. We live longer than men. <laughs> we earn less than men we are smart as men so let's uh, learn about something about this new topic and save up for our future i love it well this has been amazing lilia i i am so thankful that you came on the show today um, you know, you really opened, I think, a lot of people's eyes because a lot of people, I think a lot of women, especially, they struggle with trying to, they wear lots of different hats and they try to balance all these different hats. And, you know, so many want to achieve success and they want to get to higher levels in life. And, you know, you know, sometimes they feel overwhelmed because of this, all the hats they wear. Sometimes it's fear-based. They're afraid of, 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 you know, failing. And what you said before about, you know, that they, they are scared to let go where we're savers, you know, so it, it's, you know, for some reason, I don't know why, but since many women would rather save money than spend money, you know, where men will like to take chances and, you know, their mentality is you can't, you can't make it if you don't spend it. And you don't see a lot of women with that same mentality, but look where it got you. You went from $600 to being a coming a millionaire. So, you know, learning 
and then applying what you learn and then being able to take a chance got you into yeah. a new bracket and a new and you know now you're experiencing a different part of your life that you probably didn't even think was possible when you first came here you probably never expected that you would elevate to this point in your life but you have because you took a chance yes and it's not a chance i think it's more educated uh educated decision i think right. it, yeah it's 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 not as risky as it perceived or yes. found gotcha. it in our head. I think if I learn it, anybody can. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a multimillionaire, but you can get to very comfortable lifestyle where you can work from home and live exactly. on a passive income. It's not what we all want to have a control of our life. And this is a wonderful uh, alternative to doing anything else. Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Well, I look forward to reading your book. I'll be probably one of the first readers. I am really looking forward to uh, reading your Stacey, book. Yeah, I am so uh, honored because you are yourself such an accomplished writer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I'm actually curious about reading about the epilepsy book because my uh, aunt has it since. Oh. Birth, so I'm. I was very interested in this topic. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll tell you more about it after the show. You know, this has been amazing. I want to just thank you so much for coming on the show. I want to thank you for sharing your story and sharing all this valuable information. And I hope in the future you'll be back on and we could talk some more and you could share some more valuable information because I think you definitely are an inspiration to many women out there as we need more women like you who are, you know, willing to make educated decisions and move forward and not let, you know, the, the percentage of of men in our industry you know overwhelm us or fear-based us you you know you're using your knowledge your ability and you're putting it to good use and you're growing and elevating to different levels in life and every woman has the ability to do that and we just need to be more of an inspiration to others so we all can do that so thank you so much thank you so much for being on the show thank you Stacey so much you have a great day you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.